and welcome back to another episode of Logically Fit. Today, we have a very special guest that I'm genuinely excited to have on the show, Joseph Sheehy, co-founder and also the CEO of Cured Nutrition. Not only are we going to be going into all things CBD and THC, clearing up misconceptions and talking about the real benefits, but we're also getting into Joseph's personal journey and the powerful why behind starting Cured. Joseph's story is, I will have to say, absolutely incredible from quitting his corporate job of being an aerospace engineer to becoming a nationally recognized physique competitor and eventually using his journey to cured nutrition. His path has been full of growth, setbacks, and finding a purpose that aligns with just being your best self. But before we dive into today's episode, I want to take a hot minute to shout out our amazing sponsors, Legion Athletics and Cured Nutrition. These two brands have been absolute game changers, not just for me, but for so many people at, in our Thriving On community. So let's start with Legion first. If you've been following me for a while, you know I do not mess around when it comes to supplements. Legion, hands down, is my go-to from anywhere from pre-workout to protein. And the reason why is because they're 100% transparent. No proprietary blends, no sketchy ingredients like you see from a lot of other companies out there. Everything is backed by science, and you know I'm all about the evidence-based approach. And my favorite go-to is definitely the Legion Whey Plus Protein. My favorite flavors are going to be cocoa cereal and also the new peanut butter fudge that they just came out with. They're so freaking good. Plus, it's made with grass-fed whey so I can feel good about what I'm putting in my body, especially with my sensitive scums. What really drew me to Legion and why we partnered with them in the first place is their dedication to integrity and transparency. They care about giving you the products that actually work without all the marketing BS. It aligns perfectly with what we do at Thriving On. We're all about helping you make educated decisions and get real results without shortcuts. And you can use our code THRIVINGON, all caps, one word, at checkout to get 20% off your first order and double the reward points each time you use it to help you save some cash while also supporting us, which we thank you for. Another big thing that really stands them out from the rest in the industry is that they have a 30-day no return guarantee policy. So if you don't like their products, they'll return your money, no sweat. That just shows me how confident they are in their products, which is awesome to see. Now let's dive into Cured Nutrition. Honestly, their products have been a lifesaver for me, especially when it comes to stress management and getting quality of sleep. You guys know I have had my battles with sleep and Cured Serenity Gummies is my absolute favorite and has been a complete game changer. I'm finally getting to the point where I am enjoying winding down to go to sleep at night rather than feeling anxious because I know I'm probably going to be up all night tossing and turning. And their Zen supplement, it's totally my go-to for calming the mind before bed. I don't feel grogginess. I just get solid, restful sleep, which is what I love. What I also love about Cured is that they're not just slapping CBD on everything and calling it a day. They combine adaptogens, mushrooms, and cannabinoids to create intentional products that help you show up as your best self. That's why partnering with them is such a no-brainer. Like us at Thriving On, we're all about using science-backed, holistic approaches to help you take control of your health. No gimmicks, just real results. If you haven't tried Cured yet, I've got you covered. Use code KC. The letters K and the C at checkout for 15% off their products. Trust me, whether you're struggling with stress, sleep, or just need some extra help to calm down in your life, their stuff is legit. All right, now that you know who has got your back when it comes to supplement and health, let's jump into today's episode. And welcome back to another episode, guys. Today, we've got a special guest, and I'm pretty freaking excited to just hear a little bit more, not only about what he does, and we will be diving into a little bit more about CBD and THC and maybe handling a little bit more of the misconceptions out there. It is a little bit more normalized, but we're really going to dive deep into the benefits of it and even more. But I'm really excited about hearing about your story, Joseph. And by the way, we're speaking to Joseph Sheehy. Yep. I had to check before we jumped on here. He is the co-founder and CEO of Cured Nutrition, which by the way, Cured Nutrition is one of our sponsors sponsors and absolute no-brainer partnering with them. They have amazing products that not only help you with sleep, but stress management, gut health, and so much more. We had such a great experience with them. So it was an absolute no-brainer, but I am so excited to jump in here. But before we dive into the CBD, THC, getting all into the, the nitty gritty of that, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your story, Joseph, because yeah. I think a lot of people 
can relate to it. And I know I can from my pre previous experience of really getting into the health side of things as to why. So do you mind diving into like your whole background of how you got into the health and fitness side of things through Cure yeah. Nutrition? Yeah, absolutely. I, so before starting Cured, I spent about six years in the competitive bodybuilding world, which I've noticed I've, I've met a lot of people that have followed a similar trajectory. They've gone to bodybuilding to really for a lot of people, they've almost said it's, it saved them, it allowed them to, to turn pain into movement in the gym, to move through pain and actually just like try to work through the things that we couldn't necessarily put words to. And so before, right before I started Cured, I was transitioning actually out of the bodybuilding world. And I was on this journey of trying to define for myself what, what true health really was. But what brought me to the bodybuilding world is ultimately what, what started Cured. And so seven years before leaving corporate engineering and stepping into becoming an entrepreneur, I found myself in college in one of the darkest places of my life. I went to school in Boulder, Colorado to study aerospace engineering. And I think as a lot of people do when they go into college, they find themselves in this place where <clears throat> they're surrounded by a bunch of people that are all not really sure who they are. And for me, I lived a pretty sheltered life growing up. And I got to this place in Boulder, Colorado, where it seemed like there were no rules. It seemed like I could almost start to just explore anything I wanted to explore. But I had no guiding principles for who I would be surrounding myself with. And what ended up happening was I lost myself. Over the first four years of college, I found myself partying, drinking, doing drugs most nights, probably five out of seven nights uh, out of a week. And... I was in this place where, like a lot of people I've met, I was still high functioning. So I could go party five out of seven days of the week, but I could still do really well in school. And so from the outside looking in, it almost looked like there was nothing wrong until there, there was. And one night in April 2012, it was 2.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning, I was coming out of a, a blackout. And I had found myself on a bridge. I climbed over the guardrail and my feet were hanging off the edge of the bridge. And I was looking down at rocks below, recognizing that I was ready to take the last step of my life. And in that moment, as I blinked to consciousness or awareness and really recognized where I was, I heard a voice and there was somebody down below the bridge sitting on the rocks Tuesday morning. 2 30 a.m my angel quite literally and he just said stop don't do it and he asked me he said can i can i come up there and i just busted into tears and he climbed up the rocks climbed around the bridge and he pulled me over the guardrail and i had at the time a girlfriend who was trying to catch up to me i was walking home when i decided to step over the guardrail she ended uh up walking me all the way home and as I got home, I took a handful of Xanax. And the next day I was in the hospital under 24 hour surveillance after trying to commit suicide. And I had my parents standing over me and the doctor was asking, Hey Joe, we're going to run some tests. And I'm just curious, what are we, what are we going to find in your system? And the truth was two weeks before this night, I had been in Miami on spring break at ultra music festival for seven weeks or for seven days while I was there every single day, every single night, just completely numbing myself and escaping from myself. And all of that combined with all the other partying throughout the years really led me to this place where I was wanting to no longer be here. I had a lot of social anxiety and the way that I felt like I could connect was if I could actually numb my walls, take down my walls and connect with other people. And it worked until it didn't. And that night was when the trajectory of my life completely changed. I was put on antidepressants very quickly after that, but I continued to drink and I continued to have more suicidal thoughts and ideation. And eventually I got to the point where my parents were like, you have to come out of Boulder. We're, we're moving you home. You're going to move home with us. You're going to live with us. Basically remove yourself from all your friends and ended up finishing my last year of school 
driving from Littleton, Colorado to Boulder, Colorado, doing my coursework and then just coming home. I completely cut myself off from everybody that I surrounded myself with. And the other part of it was I didn't tell anybody why. Nobody knew that I tried to kill myself that night. And so for years, I had myself living under this cloud of shame. I was too embarrassed to tell anybody where I was. And I also was too embarrassed to just talk to those people that were in my life. They had no idea where I went. Where did Joe go? It was almost as if I had died to them. And those weeks and months and years after that night were, were hard. They were very dark, but I, I started on this path that ultimately led me to bodybuilding and then led me years later to starting Cured. But the truth was through all of that, I just became more and more resistant to the standard institutionalized medicine route. This is what you're going to take. This is why you're going to take it. And the truth was, it wasn't until years later where I recognized this was something that was going to define the purpose of my life. Because while my mom escaped alcoholism, my uncle, my cousin, my grandpa all died from alcohol and I almost died from alcohol. While my mom escaped that, what she didn't escape and what I recognized and God bless her, I love like so much love for my mom, but I grew up seeing orange bottles with white caps everywhere. And I don't know if that's escaping. I don't know if that was the thought that that was the only way to move through struggles, illnesses, sicknesses, mental health, but it wasn't my path and it wasn't working for me. And of course I wasn't making the right decisions when I was put on those medications, but I also knew that there was another way. And my mom was the same person who ended up introducing me to Dr. Andrew Weil, who is the founder and owner of True Food, but he also wrote a book called Spontaneous Healing. And in that book, when my mom gave me that book, that's where he talked about herbs and sunlight and food and nutrition and movement to work through mental health struggles. And that was what set me on the path of really being interested in an alternative route. And as I started to tell my story years later, I had person after person after person raise their hand, reach out to me and say, hey, I've struggled deeply. I connect with your story. And I'm also interested in another way, in a holistic alternative path. And that is the fuel that led me to today to start Cured. And we can talk about me leaving corporate America and how I finally did that because that was also very hard. But that was the catalyst to my whole story, story was those dark years in college <clears throat> and quite literally recognizing that if Ben, that man underneath the bridge was not there, I quite literally wouldn't be here right now. Wow. I have so many questions for that. Um, but first of all, that story is so amazing. I bet you that most majority of our listeners are really resonating with this. And the fact that you got to a place in your life where you could share that you already said that you're already making an impact in people's lives because they can resonate with that. And that's so powerful. Just being able to talk about these things that people that when you see them, like being a healthier and things like that, usually didn't start that way. We usually went through our own struggles, saw it with our own parents, and we didn't want that for ourselves. And we want to make a bigger impact in other people because because we don't want them to go through what we went through. But I want to circle back to something that you were talking about before, where it's like, hey, like I was in this environment that was really influencing me. And I had to take myself out of that environment, right? With college, it was a lot of drinking, a lot of drugs, a lot of partying, P probably people dealing with the same issues or similar issues as you that was feeding off of you. And then you were put into a different environment. So do you feel like the bodybuilding was like an environment that got you around other people that heavily influenced you to move a different way at first for sure yeah and it eventually became disordered in of itself and it it but a hundred percent because i had as i left college where i first went was running i would just literally run away from my pain i ran a half marathon that first year i would just get out and i would just run along the river but I didn't have like I was that, those were the most lonely years of my life because I just I completely cut ties. I didn't tell anybody what happened. They later found out as I told about the story on social media and 100 percent as I started to pursue the bodybuilding career, even just showing up to the gym, not even meeting people online, I would just meet similar people. 
they'd be like, this is like, this is my, you know, the, the joke of like, this is my happy hour. I come into the gym and this is my happy hour. And for me, what I had recognized is my entire life. And I think this is true for a lot of people. And I, and I want to credit my parents for this, but I had always believed I was meant for something great. I had always believed that I was meant to be that, that I knew that I was somebody that could put his mind to something and get it. And I proved that in aerospace engineering. I then ended up proving that in bodybuilding, but I didn't really realize that, <clears throat> that, that my pattern was to push things to the limit. And so that is what I did in college. That is also what I did ultimately in bodybuilding. But the people that I met in the fitness and the health and fitness world and the bodybuilding world all shared a lot of similar stories. A lot of people had used the gym to move through pain. And that what they did was they recognized how powerful they actually were, that we could be the creator of something, that we could quite literally shape our body, that we could shape the trajectory of our life, that we could shape our decisions, that we could shape our actual reality. And if it weren't for finding the bodybuilding world, I don't think I would have ultimately got to the place where I am now. And I'm so thankful for it. And it's and it also has a very thin line of what is healthy and what is not healthy. And so, you know, there's nuance in all of it. Right. Now, with that, um, that whole story behind things that happened to you or some people want to frame it, it's that they happened for, right? That being the inspiration behind starting Cure Nutrition. How do you feel like that, that journey you were on has shaped the mission of the entire company and the community you've built around it? Yeah, that's such a great question. I didn't start telling my story until I was sitting in church one day with my mom and the lead pastor was telling his story of sitting down at a table to take a bottle of, I don't know what it was, but some pharmaceutical to end his own life. And when he told that story in front of the entire church, I was just coming back to the church. I had spent a bunch of time away from it. And as I walked in there with my mom, I just walked with my head down in so much shame because of the darkness that I was in. And I remember him telling his story and me just like having my hand, my head in my hands and me bawling. But then me hearing him tell his story and me recognize that there was this energy in the room. And as I looked around, I said, oh, these people love him more. They trust him more. This doesn't disqualify him from leading this church. This actually does qualify him from lead, for, for leading this church. And that day was when I decided to start telling my story. And as I recognized more and more people connected with my story, and I moved through this idea of what is true health and wellness and alternative health and wellness, I actually started to recognize that as I used cannabis in college, it was also combined with a lot of self-hatred and a bunch of other drugs. So I could look back on that time in my life and I could say, well, there are also times where I used cannabis and I would go out and hike. I would sit down and I would listen to music and I would draw, I would do my schoolwork. And I was like, was cannabis the problem or was my intention and my use case the problem? And that's exactly what the problem was. And so I started to become more curious because at the same time, several years into my engineering career was when I live in Colorado, when cannabis was starting to be legalized for medicinal and recreational use. And I was very curious about it because I had never heard about CBD, but I started to, I started to do more research and understand more of the cannabis plant. And I would go into a dispensary and I would, I would recognize that there were products that I could use that weren't necessarily to get me high. They helped me calm down. They helped me get relief and they helped me fall asleep. They helped me recover. They he actually were helping my fitness. But the problem was when I walked into the dispensary, a lot of the time I would be met by the stereotypical bud tender. And I was like, ah, oh, like, I wish this person was somebody that would like, was really clean cut that talked to me in a very clean, crisp, clear way that exuded a different type of person as the user of cannabis. And I worked at Lockheed Martin in the time when it was legalized. I remember when Lockheed Martin sent out this big company wide communication saying, while cannabis has been legalized in Colorado, we are a federally funded company and you cannot be a user of cannabis. And I had this interest in the t at the time, but I also was still a, a newer employee. 
And I remember listening to my colleagues around me. Some would be like, this is amazing. This is the best thing that ever happened. And then some would have a very like stigma, uh, very, very, uh, very negative view of, of cannabis. And I just started asking the question. I was like, why? Like, why is that the case? Where did that story, <clears throat> where did that story come from that everybody had? And so what I recognized was if we could use stories to create connection and to open up people's mind, just like I use my story of struggles with mental health to create deeper connection with people, to recognize that you're not broken, I asked could that be possible with cannabis? Could we rebrand cannabis to change the narrative around who a cannabis user may be, to use it for relief, to use it for relaxation, not to tune out, but to tune in. And I recognized that that was going to be hard because of the stereotypical view that many people had on the industry. I mean, the results of over a hundred years of propaganda is where you get Cheech and Chong stoner mentality. It's where you get the dare program. And we all live in stories, but a lot of times we don't question them. And so ultimately what happened was <clears throat> I, I was, I had this entrepreneurial bug and I remember every day showing up to Lockheed Martin, sitting in my cubicle, clicking away, just being like, damn, I worked so hard for this and I don't want to be here. Damn. I worked so hard for this. This is what I thought I was supposed to do. I was following the shoulds and the supposed tos of my parents, society, but it was far from what I expected to feel like when I worked hard enough to get to where I thought I was supposed to go. And I remember listening to a Joe Rogan podcast, sitting in my cubicle and him quoting Thoreau saying, most men live lives of quiet desperation. And I looked around, I looked at my colleagues and I was like, I see a lot of quiet desperation in a lot of people that have been here 20, 30 years. And that is not going to be my story. And so I started to play around with ideas of, of entrepreneurship and building companies and eventually, as I started to get much closer to having the idea of what became Cured, I used to tell this story differently because I thought that my boss couldn't see it, but I recognized that my boss could see that I didn't want to be there. And one day, he just completely belittled me in front of a bunch of my colleagues. And I had recognized that you know there was, there was this desire of what I wanted in my life, and then there was the person that I actually was, the person that I was showing up and being. And I knew I wanted something different, but I wasn't making different decisions. I still showed up every day and I still was like, I'm going to click away and I'm going to do this. And maybe if I still just work hard enough in this, even though I don't want it, I'll find more happiness. And so I really was starting to slip into what was depression again. But years ago, I knew what depression, why I had depression. And it, for me, it was because there's the person that I said I was, and there was the person that I actually was. I mean, there's a gap between those two. We just live in constant dissonance, constant anxiety, because it's easy to poke a hole in that. Like, that's what we're scared of. Anxiety for a lot of people is recognizing that there's this gap between these two people, these two identities that are us. Which one are we? And of course, we would be anxious. And so I ended up seeing a therapist. And that day after my boss belittled me, I was sitting in his in the therapist's office and I was just sharing the ideas that I had about Cured, how hard I had worked to get to where I was. I'd actually ended um, an engagement with my fiance. I was finding myself completely, just completely lost and lonely again. But I knew that I could actually take control of this depression. And my boss, what, what you can't see behind me, there's a bookshelf behind me and there's a picture frame on it and there's a note card on it. When I sat in that therapist's office, I just, I was just kind of spinning my wheels <clears throat> and the therapist stopped me at one point. He's like, Joe, I'm just, I'm just going to stop you. Like, I just need to give you something. And he turns and he reaches to his desk and he pulls out this card and he writes something on it and he goes, I'm going to give this to you. And I don't think you're ever going to come back as a client, but I need you to give this to you. And he hands it to me and I flip the card over and he had just written permission on the back. And he goes, Joe, you're looking for permission from everybody in the outside world, but nobody's going to give it to you besides yourself. And that night I left the therapist's office. I put in my letter of resignation. And the next day I woke up, I had a couple months worth of savings in my bank account. I had an idea of what I wanted cured to be, but I had never felt more free in my life. I had no security. But it ultimately just came from this idea that we have to start looking at the stories that run our life differently. 
And depression led me to this idea of telling the story of cannabis differently, telling the story of alternative health differently, putting a different label on it. And that's what's become our mission. We, we were here to change the way 1 million people think about cannabis. And we're well on our way to doing that. That is awesome. I fucking love these stories. I, got I was about to right say, it, it's that exact same Joe Rogan podcast um, actually had me quit my job working under the FDA. No way. Um, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I walked in, I had a performance review. Um, and I sat in my supervisor's office and he said, it's, you know, when I see you work, you don't make mistakes, but it seems like this is not your number one priority. I was like, mm. it's because this is work. It's this job that I'm doing for you that doesn't align with what I'm truly passionate about can't be my number one priority. It's a gateway for me to create funding so that I can do those things. And he said, well, then maybe this isn't the right fit. And I took my badge, I laid it on the desk and I said, fine, then I'm out. And I called my now wife and she was like, you just walked into the office. What are you doing? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's, I actually just quit. Um, <laughs> Did you say with the FDA? Uh, yeah, I was working under, under like the FDA was regulating. I was doing some quality assurance work with a, with a, with a federally um, sponsored like blood donation group that okay. was um, delivering um, blood to hospitals, to patients where they, where they were needed. And on all of these collection sites around, well, they called it the Rhino region. Um, where it was a lot of like in the, in the Dakotas where I live in North Dakota. So it was like Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, there needed to be things supervised and observed, right? Paperwork yeah. written if somebody had a negative experience and it's like, so we just traveled around and made sure that those things are taken care of properly. And I hated what I was doing. I was treating everybody around me like an absolute asshole, um, I being from Europe, um, where, well, drugs and alcohol are just a little bit more accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, I went down the same path and eventually my wife's like, who are you? Something has to change. And so I quit, took three months of money that I had saved up, started my own company, eventually quit that too. And mm -hmm. then I joined forces with Casey. So here we are, but it's actually wild that you said it was the quote of that a lot of people live lives in of quiet desperation. And I was like, it's that exact same quote made me quit the job that I hated. Yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was like, literally when I heard that, I was like, Oh, that's it's me. That whole, that whole explanation of where we just sit in a cubicle and we just try to play a game of getting a job, racking up credit card debt and shoving your round peg in a square hole and literally looking forward to when you can sit in the bathroom and pull out your phone. And I was like, that's me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right there and that can't be how we live life yeah it's, it's like having that courage to uh, bridge the gap between who you're acting like and who you want to be that's where the magic happens but mm -hmm. it's not fucking easy yeah putting that no. badge down or or putting in your two-week notice is probably really scary <laughs> it was yeah. but it's like walking out was the only time in the facility that i smiled which was the wildest thing like i walked out happy you know and it's we have nothing lined up and my wife's like what are you gonna do and i was like i don't know We'll figure it out. Like it can't, it can't be worse than this. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's where all the magic happens is because when you have no second option, that's when you actually work. Like you have no second option. Yeah, exactly. When you have one foot out the door, you're, you're going to act like it. Yeah. Right? You've got to dive head first, but I do want to get into the next question. So like you were talking about creating a new narrative or rebranding like a cannabis THC and things like that. So it's a little bit more mainstream now. But mm -hmm. there's probably still a lot of confusion out there. So can you break down like the key benefits of each and how they differ with the effects of the body and how that works with your products with Cure Nutrition? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that I like to explain it is if you were to think of, of cannabis as like the mother and then below it, there's either hemp or marijuana, but hemp, everybody's heard hemp, everybody's heard marijuana. They're both cannabis. The difference between the two is that... <clears throat> Hemp is cannabis with less than 0.3% THC. 
marijuana is cannabis with greater than 0.3% THC. The line between the two has become very blurry. For the longest time, hemp was more industrial. You could make clothing out of it. Henry Ford built a Model T out of it. You could create fuel. You can, there's something called hempcrete. It's like one of the strongest building materials that there is. And so it used to just be industrial. It used to be tall and stocky, but now the breeders in the industry have bred hemp to express higher concentrations of cannabinoids, but keep it below the 0.3% THC. So cured extracts, all of our product extract from the hemp plant. So there's low dose THC in there, but there's still THC in there. So the cannabis plant has over a hundred known cannabinoids and all of them are being thought to have different therapeutic benefits. The ones that you'll see the most are CBD, THC, You'll see CBN in our products. CBG is another one that's very interesting, CBC. But when I name all of those, they have a little bit different, uh, a little bit of different benefits. And the main difference is between CBD and THC. So marijuana is high THC. That's where you are almost feeling like intoxicated. At very low dosages, THC is just there for relief. It's not there to get you high, but it has to be at low concentrations. And so I'll talk about how we, we create those concentrations. But the main difference is CBD is what's typically used for calming. It's used for recovery. It has anti-inflammatory like properties. You use it over the course of time. It helps your body achieve homeostasis. Your body has an endocannabinoid system with CB1 and CB2 receptors all over your body, all over your brain. And that system can be regulated or modulated by taking exogenous cannabinoids. And the system's responsible for sleep-wake cycle, mood, appetite, a lot of normal bodily functions, stress response. And so many people will take CBD for the overall just general health and wellness benefits, but the calming effects are really great for any time you need calming during the day or really helping you fall asleep. A lot of people can't fall asleep because their mind's just racing. So CBD is great for that. Now, <laughs> yeah, me too. And that's why I started using it. And, and THC at low concentrations gives almost a euphoric effect, but it's really good for instantaneous relief. Like when people smoke cannabis, that's the quickest way to get the, the, the relief from the THC but then a lot of people get anxious. And so people come to the plant and they're looking for the calming effects, but they end up getting anxious. And that's because they're using too high of concentrations of THC. If you go to a dispensary, you could get a dose of between five milligrams to like 20 milligrams in our products to keep it below that legal limit from hemp. We have it at about a milligram per serving. So think of it as like a fifth or a 10th of a normal dosage that most people are using to get high. We're not intending to get people high. We're intending people to get the, like just the exhale, the relief, the relaxation from it. So that's THC and CBD. And then CBN, we use a lot in our sleep products. I like to describe the effects of CBN like a weighted blanket. So when you take CBN, it's, it's more body um, it's more, uh, more of a body sedation effect where like, it feels like you're laying underneath a weighted blanket. So think calm more of your mind with CBD, calm more, more of your body and get to sleep with CBN. I would not take CBN during the day and then take THC for more of the instantaneous relief and more of just the, oh, like the exhale. But we combine a lot of our THC, low dose THC containing products with other adaptogens like L-theanine and ashwagandha and reishi, which help counteract the anxiety like effects. So you just get the stress relief and the calming without the actual anxiety producing effects. Those are the three main cannabinoids. CBG is very interesting. Some people view it as a little bit stimulating, a little bit uplifting. Um, it's also been, people have talked about using it for gut health. And then of course, there's all the other cannabinoids in the cannabis plant that as we start to grow, continue to grow this industry and allow there to be more studies of it. I think there's going to be a lot of exciting science around what are called minor cannabinoids. So 
THC and CBD are considered major because they're at higher concentrations in the plant, but minor cannabinoids like CBN, CBC, CBG uh, have a lot of potential to be used for different effects. So I'll, st I'll just stop there with those and, and see what, what questions you have. It's my wife actually suffers from chronic migraines and we're living in North Dakota, where it's still federally regulated and not allowed, but it's, we live right on the Minnesota border. And the one day she had a pounding migraine and her medication forces her to go to bed. Mm -hmm. And it was, I don't know, 10 30 AM. And she said, if I take the medication now, I'm losing all of my day. So usually what she does is she will just deal with it. And I was like, you know, there's tons of people who utilize micro dosages to get relief from those kind of things. And we had some at home and I was like, why don't you try take like a quarter or a fifth of a gummy and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And about 45 minutes later, she was like, well, this is a problem because it's illegal in North Dakota and I feel zero pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I actually get migraines too. And a lot of those medications are just, they're intense. Yeah. And the thing with the other thing with migraines too, and this is, this is what's really cool about the whole industry is like cancer patients actually use THC for appetite because a lot of the, the medications that they'll take or when they're under chemo, it'll make them really nauseous and really hard to eat. And so THC is also an appetite. Uh, I was going to say suppressive. It's the exact opposite. It'll help with your appetite, <laughs> maybe sometimes too much, but, but it is good for helping maintain weight. And that's really important. Like you have to eat. So it's like, there's so much nuance to it. And what's hard is, you know, you hear those stories and most people want to just write that off. They're like, nah, that can't be true. But it is true for a lot of people. And most people won't venture into trying it because of the stories that they have about how are people going to now think about me? Oh, okay. I'm, am I the, the Cheech and Chong stoner that sits on the couch and eats potato chips? Well, it's far from that. I mean, some of the most motivated, hardworking people I know are cannabis users and they never stop. They just like t the exhale at night, but they're not doing that to escape like alcohol is for a lot of people. So it's very interesting. Like those telling those stories are so important because that actually helps people just open their curiosity and say, okay, maybe this is a potential. Yeah. And I think it's also probably hearing from previous experience with other people where mm -hmm. maybe they didn't use it right, which I love how you brought in intentionalism right there, where it's like, it's not the act that is right or wrong. It's the intention behind it. And also mm -hmm. how you use it. It's a tool like anything else. And if you abuse it or use it for an intention to run away from it, yeah, it's going to be not a great tool. But if you use it like what you're talking about with a lot of friends who are high performers and they use it as a tool to be constructive in their life, then it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be an awesome yeah. tool to help them. So it's more about like how you use it and why you're using it that matters. But people get into that, like what you said before, into that story of like, the propaganda before of like, are you a stoner or they've heard bad experiences from other people that might have not known how to use it correctly mm -hmm. or didn't have awesome products like Cure does that causes maybe a little bit of the anxiety and doesn't have the, all the added benefits that prevent a lot of that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like reframing the way that you think and being willing to be like cognitively flexible or open minded is another way to say it. But my yeah. next thing that I wanted to ask because you just you did a really great job of explaining what are the benefits, what they do, but there's probably still people listening that are might be a little bit on like the oh okay I'm open, but like can you go over like common myths or misconceptions about uh, like CBD and THC and all the different products that you use and like <clears throat> how do you counter that? How do you talk people through that? Yeah, so <clears throat> the first thing that I would say is if you're using a a THC free product, which 50% of our products are, you will never have THC in your system. And so if you're worried about drug tests, if you're worried about even very, very small dosages, not responding well to you, just start with a THC free product. And that will, that should never be a worry because you don't get the intoxicating effects. That's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. And I would say that other people other misconceptions are just looking at it, not as something that could almost be like a daily vitamin. Since you have an endocannabinoid system, your body is set up to be regulated by taking exogenous cannabinoids. Other things can modulate that system, 
like black pepper can actually modulate your endocannabinoid system. There are cannabinoids or, uh, there are essentially cannabinoids in other things besides cannabis. And that system is not like just all of a sudden there, it's always been in our body. And so how I, how I like to help people think about it is think about vitamin D and having vitamin D deficiency. This could also be true in how we think about homeostasis and our overall stress response of our body. And if CBD can help regulate our ability to have specific stress response, it's just something that should just be used daily and considered almost like a vitamin. Now, when we talk about the THC end, I think it's really important to recognize that at one milligram, <clears throat> everybody's going to feel a different effect, but it should almost be subperceptual. And so if you have heard people use cannabis before and they say, I got anxious, I, I got fearful, I didn't, I fell asleep, whatever, like any of the, the negative stories, if you take just one serving of cured product, I will guarantee you that you will never get to the point of taking enough THC to experience some of those negative effects that people are talking about. And we've been very intentional in designing our products that way because we knew that this was true. I mean, I've taken too much THC and I did not like it at all. And I think a lot of people would say that that's true. And so what we're trying to do is we're saying there's a market of people out there. There's like the THC users, right? And then there's alcohol users. And then there's everybody that wants something different, that wants to get relief and relaxation, but they don't know how. And they're not the people that can just go, oh, I can just do breath work. I can just meditate. I can just do this on my own. Like, great. But like, that's not true for a lot of people, right? So <clears throat> what we're trying to do is be the conduit to opening up people's mind to this is cannabis. You're using it at a very low concentration and all those negative side effects that you're hearing about <clears throat> are not what Cured is trying to provide for you. And so you can start to open up your mind to maybe this isn't what I thought it was. And that's where a lot of the misconceptions are because people think cannabis blanket statement, bad, it's going to get me high and it's just not true. So I would say those are the, the most common misconceptions, not knowing how to use it, not knowing how to use it effectively, not knowing that you can't, if you just use straight CBD without zero THC, you'll never get any of the potential effects of THC. We can guarantee that our test results will show and we stand behind them very, very strongly that there's no THC in them. Um, I would say that those are the main ones that tend to come up. Now, if somebody was thinking about starting with this, like somebody's listening right now and they're like, okay, now I'm being a little bit more open-minded. Where should I start? Where, what mm -hmm. would you suggest them to start with? <clears throat> so if you're looking for sleep or calming, our Zen product is a THC free product. It's got reishi mushroom, ashwagandha, valerian, passion flower, and then about 15 milligrams of CBD in it, zero THC. If you want to start with something that's zero THC, I would go with that product. Most people use it for sleep. It's really powerful for sleep, but you can take it any time of day because it's not too uh, overwhelming. It's not going to make you just fall asleep. It's just going to calm you down. That would probably be the best place to start if you're nervous about it. Most people are trying our Serenity gummies as the first product. And those are a product that has low dose THC in it. But when you just take one of those, the L-theanine in there and the ashwagandha in there. So you'll see L-theanine in you'll see L-theanine in like energy drinks or other stimulating products. And the reason L-theanine is in there is because when you have a stimulating product, L-theanine helps counteract that and you can get the, the energy, but without like the overstimulation. Same thing is true in this product. So what may cause people to feel a little bit anxious is actually counteracted by the L-theanine. So Serenity gummies, they're really easy to take. They're really tasty. One gummy, it'll be a great exhale. And I would just try it for the very first time at 5, 6 p.m. at night and just recognize that it's just quite literally like an exhale in a bag. Just like it's it's not anything more than that. So you really want to set the expectations of what they're going to experience. If you're not interested in the gummies, we also have something called Calm Caps, which are a similar, similar formulation 
two serenity gummies, but it's just hemp extract. So there's no L-theanine, there's no ashwagandha, there's no reishi in it. A lot of people really like those products as well. I would start with one of those three. And all three of those, while I'm saying they can be used anytime, many people use them for sleep as well. So if you want to just use it for sleep, you can do it about 60 to 90 minutes before bed. It really helps you unwind at the end of the day and get you to sleep. And I will tell you over and over and over again, we have people monitoring their sleep score and I want to do a clinical trial because I'm very confident in the results that we will see, but it's just like night and day people go, this was before this was after and everybody's seeing improvement and not only deep sleep, but also their REM sleep, which is re like, I kind of say deep and deep is for your body. REM is for your brain, uh, but those are like your sleep cycles. So I, I would start with one of those three products. Yeah. Those are all the products uh, that I actually started with. So the serenity gummies, the nightcaps, I, I will actually know the nightcaps, but I did try the calming caps too. And then also the Zen, all of those are really great. And by the way, I am that person that just sleep is in my suck bucket. Like it's something that I've always struggled with most of my adult life. Even when I was younger too, my brain doesn't stop. And then also ADHD prone to anxiety, prone to a depression. Just, it's just kind of counteracting. Plus you choose an entrepreneur lifestyle <laughs> just kind of starts piling on and it's just yep. making sleep extremely hard. And I remember have being in this moment where I'm just like crying because I don't want to go to sleep because I know how much anxiety is going to come from it because I'm trying to force myself to sleep because I know it's how important it is, but it's a huge struggle. Mm -hmm. And over the years, it's gotten little by little bit better just by like soup routine and just like learning a little bit more about stress management and turning off the lights, all the different stuff that we can do. But it wasn't until I started taking Cured where I actually started becoming the person that actually started looking forward to going to bed. Mm -hmm. Like now I'm the type of person where I'm like, fuck this, turning off the lights, putting everything away, getting in my bed and reading my kindle and ready to go and that's like you cannot put a price on that like that was an absolute game changer like it was literally the the thing that added everything together and helped out a lot and i know that my boyfriend has been trying it too completely converted him especially the serenity gummies i literally mm -hmm. just put an order, another order in and i told him <laughs> fuck yes like it's it's such a really great tool but going back to how people like can really be a little bit iffy at the very beginning because like past narratives or in my case, very similar to you where I used alcohol, I used drugs and things like that to really try to cope with emotions or run away from things. I also had a very, very high social anxiety as well. And so all of college, like I got a scholarship for athletics. I was supposed to be, I'm not going to say I was the most amazing athlete in the world, but I was fairly decent and I threw it down the drain because of my inability to manage my emotions and running away from things. And so knowing my past self from that, I've always steered away from overdoing on alcohol, even remotely being open to touching drugs. I remember the first time somebody suggesting that to help me manage and just kind of like help with sleep and anxiety. I was like, no, no, never touching that. It's horrible. I, I can't, I can't manage myself. And then over a period of time, learning more and more, hearing from people like you, and really learning more about this. I remember running into Cured in an event, a business event, and just learning more about it. I was like, you know what? We need to take a second look at this. Let's be a little bit open. Tried a couple of supplements, a couple of samples. And I was like, you know what? I think we found something. <laughs> like, I think this is actually so really great. So yeah, it's really awesome to hear about all the different things that this brings and also experiencing it in person. But I'm curious, what are your favorite go-to products? I would probably say Serenity Gummies because they're so versatile. One product that we didn't talk about is Rise, which is a, a basically a nootropic. It's really good for brain energy. I love that product as well. I take Rise and Serenity every single day. Um, if I could only have one product, it would be Serenity because of its versatility, because you can take it any time of day and you can just take less and you feel the calming effects, but you can take, you know, one or two gummies and two gummies actually goes a really long way. And those are great for sleep. My routine actually is about 4.35 PM. I'll take my Serenity gummies and it'll, they'll kick in in about like 45 minutes, but 
I also get this like flow state creativity on serenity gummies. So I like to end my day with this, just like ease into the day. But at the end of the day, for me as an entrepreneur, I start in the morning with all my output. So I'm just getting everything out to the team. This is where we're going. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to get done. Timelines, deadlines, all that stuff. And my midday is usually a lot of meetings. But by the time I get to the end of the day, I like to do some creative work, but I have to be in more flow state and serenity really helps me get in there. I like to turn on some music. And then by the time you eat dinner and you're, you're relaxing and unwinding, then you're like, okay, I can actually, I, it's like, it's like you, Casey talking about the mind racing. I really focus at like 5 PM. I need to start unwinding my mind so that by the time I get to 9 PM, I can actually fall asleep. So it takes a while for me. Hundred percent. It definitely helps out a lot. The I've had times where I'm like up until midnight, and I'm like, "Well, yep. my brain will literally not stop." Sometimes it's just like you can do all the different things, you can do all the tips and tricks. But ever since we've had that serenity gummies, it's like the kickstart to actually start getting in the mode. It's become a routine. It's something that I look forward to now. After struggling about it with it for so many years, like I feel so much better because of it too. And I love how you said that trying it in the beginning of the day for like starting it off, but also getting into creative mindset. I haven't tried that yet. It's only been at the end of the night. So I'm going to have to get that, give that a try because I am also, yeah, in that place where I love being creative. I love that kind of stuff, but it's really hard to get in that flow state when you have all these deadlines, all these messaging people and all that stuff too. So I'm going to have to give that a try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from here, Toby, do you have any questions? Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I so, took over. I got really excited about that. I kind of took over. <laughs> um, so, and this is probably more like experience, maybe anecdotal or research that you guys have come across um, through developing all of these products. Um, when we are taking a step back and just looking at the supplement industry as a whole, it's we know that there are certain products that will supplement each other, like vitamin D and vitamin K, for example. They're often sold together because they benefit each other. Or if we're having a hard time getting certain supplements to work, it may just be that our gut health is in such a terrible place that it just breaks everything down and it can't get through the GI tract where it all gets absorbed. Um, what are some maybe combination of products of yours or certain lifestyle changes that I can focus on to get more benefits from CBD or THC products? Cause it's, I tried this with my family and they're like, I feel nothing. And I was like, mm. Oh, that's so strange. It's like, maybe take two. And then again, it's like, I feel nothing. I was like, that is so bizarre. Like, I wonder if there's something that you're, that you're doing in your daily routine. That's just keeping you from seeing the positive effects. Yep. Yeah. Well, one thing that's really interesting about cannabinoids is <clears throat> they're lipophil lipophilic. So they actually bind to fat. So a lot of our products, not all of them, but a lot of the, the capsules have an MCT oil in them. So the MCT carrier oil really helps the body absorb the cannabinoids and process the cannabinoids. One thing that I would recommend if somebody's not feeling it is combine taking their supplements with a healthy fat like uh, avocado or more coconut oil or something like that. It also depends if you're taking the product on a full stomach. Like if you eat dinner and then you eat your serenity gummies right afterwards, you're most likely not going to feel them as effective as how I do it. I stack it. I basically eat, you know, I eat lunch around one, but then I'll eat dinner around six. So I have an empty stomach when I'm taking them around four. And when I have the empty stomach, I actually process it much quicker. And then when I'm eating dinner, I'm already starting to digest the gummies before my body's starting to digest everything else. So fat, fats, healthy fats, also not on a full stomach is really important, especially with sleep products. When it comes to sleep products, and if you're eating within two hours of trying to go to bed, no sleep products going to work for you because your body's just trying to digest and it doesn't know actually what's going on right now. It's not going to take the product and actually use it as effectively. And most people just can't sleep when they eat very close to bed. Your body's trying to do something else is trying to digest when you're actually trying to fall asleep. So one thing that I've noticed is I'll eat about 
two and a half to three hours at minimum before I want to go to bed. And then I'll take my sleep products 60 to 90 minutes before bed. So if people are trying to use it for sleep and they went from one to two servings, whatever it was they were taking, I would also ask how soon before bed were they taking it? Because some people will take it, you know, I'm getting in bed and I'm taking my sleep product. Well, you could be rolling around, tossing and turning for 60 to 90 minutes. And you're like, this isn't working, but it's just quite literally hasn't gone into effect yet. And maybe you do fall asleep 90 minutes to two hours after you lay in bed and you just got so wound up and then distressed and then finally just fall asleep. And the product was actually working when you were falling asleep, but you didn't notice it because it hadn't come into effect yet. Sleep time, uh, meal timing has a huge effect. The other thing that I would say is we designed, so we have our rise product, our aura product, and then basically every other product outside of rise and aura is for stress relief or sleep rise. We designed without caffeine in it, because when you take caffeine around, if you're taking it at about the noon time frame, the quarter life of caffeine is almost eight hours. So you could take a hundred milligrams of caffeine at noon. You're still going to have 25 milligrams of caffeine in your system at 8 PM, which is wild to think about, but some people are drinking energy drinks, coffee at two, 3 PM and not, and they're trying to counteract that with a sleep product. No sleep product is going to be strong enough to counteract all that caffeine. So I really recommend shutting off your caffeine at the right time or replacing midday caffeine with our rise product. Now we have aura, which is a gut health supplement that really helps with the overall protecting of your gut lining. So like you're saying, you're absorbing your nutrients and you're absorbing everything correctly. Cause if we really simplify all of our products down, think about taking care of your gut, taking care of your brain, and then taking care of your whole body. So stress relief, sleep, whole body, gut, nutrient absorption, brain, ability to actually have the energy to sit down, concentrate on what you're working on, but not be overstimulated by caffeine because People could say, I could say rise is a sleep benefit product, but it's actually a nootropic for your brain, which is weird that I say that. But what I'm saying is if you take rise, you replace your caffeine, you're actually going to benefit your sleep, which most people don't think about. So try and just focus everything towards how am I setting up my whole day to be able to put myself in the perfect state to sleep. Just like I talk about starting my sleep routine at 4 p.m. I mean, I really start it at 6 a.m. when I wake up and I get outside and I get some sunlight and I go for a walk. So it's it's just like this holistic view. I think too many people get caught up in, I'm gonna take this product right now. Within 20 minutes, I'm gonna see the results. And if I don't, then it doesn't work for me. So like kind of follow a question to that for the people that feel too much, that are very sensitive maybe, what you suggest the opposite of what you just recommended holds true, like having a lower fat diet. It's taking it a little bit closer to when you're eating instead of waiting, those yeah. kind of things. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 And you know, everybody's different, but right. most people will take even like those calm caps, Casey, like some, some people will take those. They'll take those on an empty stomach three hours before eating, but they won't feel them kick in till they eat. So it's, everybody's different because then their body actually starts processing it. So you got to play around like the two levers are really timing in the day and then timing in comparison to when you're eating. Not everybody's the same, but those patterns that I shared are probably the most typical patterns that we see. Yeah. So it's just a general guideline, but ultimately like trial and error, figure out what works best for you. Cause it's a little bit different for everybody. Yeah. So to wrap up this episode, I have one final question for you, All right? So looking ahead. What's next for Cured Nutrition? Are there like any exciting like projects or like products that are coming down in the pipeline? I'm really curious to know. We are releasing a product in January of next year. I would say it's similar to Rise, but that's all I'll say. And <laughs> and and it's think Serenity, think Rise, think about how you could find something in between the two, but that we don't yet sell. So that's what's coming in January. We're really excited for that. And it's non-cannabinoid actually. So it's, that's our second product that doesn't have cannabinoids in it or the gut health supplement only has functional mushrooms and adaptogens in it. We're really looking to be the company that's selling mushrooms, adaptogens, and cannabinoids and leading the path for alternative well health and wellness. If we cast ourselves out even further, one thing that many entrepreneurs go through, they go through this 
arc of recognizing that we can go feeling like you can do everything, recognizing then you can't, and then recognizing that you have to simplify and focus on the most important things. And so right now we actually have the least amount of products that we've ever had, the least amount of SKUs, but we're the biggest we've ever been. So what I'm saying by that is we're just narrowing in our focus on very specific activities. The most is stress and sleep. 82% of customers come to us for stress and sleep support. So we're doubling down on that. A comparison, you know, everybody may have opinions on it. I'm completely open to it, but Athletic Greens, they have one SKU. They're a multi-billion dollar company. So they're just so focused on one thing. Now, if that product is right or wrong, it's not up to me to decide, but I would say that they're just super focused. And if you think about some of the best performing companies, they're just really focused. So for us, continuing to double down on focus, we're continuing to build our partnerships team. Um, our whole company is built on partnerships and people because the more people that we have raise their hand to say, yes, I'm behind that mission and become evangelists for the brand, the further this thing, the further this thing goes. We talked about the narrative, the story, and our company just does so well with health and fitness professionals that exude a very strong example, but also say, Hey, I'm interested in alternative methods. So yeah. just doubling down on that. And we're right behind you. We're raising our hand. We're a hundred percent for it. Our whole premise is becoming the CEO of your health, right? Learning an alternative way from what we see out there, like conventional medicine or what we see on social media for nutrition and fitness. It's a whole other story. And just really learning what works best for you and being open to a different pathway to really just help you become your best self. So like we're a thousand percent behind it. It was a no brainer to partner with you guys and freaking a I've converted my boyfriend. I've converted a lot of our clients too. It's, it's a lot of fun to see how people are seeing the benefits of it. And we're only, um, it, we're super excited to see how you guys do in the future and how you expand and Likewise. you left me on a cliff, uh, like on a hanger right there. And I'm a little upset, but I totally understand. I'm You'll see excited. more about it in the next coming months. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Your story is absolutely amazing. It's completely wild. And I know that a lot of people hearing it, it's really going to resonate. And I'm hoping that you guys as listeners listening to this are a little bit more educated about CBD and THC, help you make a more educated decision of if this tool is going to be helpful for you and to be a little bit more open-minded and just giving it a try. I know it's completely changed my life. I know Toby and Rachel, Rachel is uh, Toby's wife, has experienced amazing benefits from it too. So we hope it helps you as well. Uh, before I let you go, Joseph, where can people find you? Yeah, I appreciate it. And thanks for having me. This has been a great conversation. Uh, Instagram's probably the best place to go. Joseph Sheehy. My last name is S H E E H E Y, or you can go directly to cured nutrition on Instagram and you can find everything there. Yeah. We'll link everything in the show notes below so that way you can grab it super easy, make it easy peasy on you. But thank you so much for another episode and we appreciate your time and attention. If you're here at the very end, we love you. We appreciate you. If you need anything, contact information is below. We'll see you next week.